Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm not actually uh, not actually in the shop, but I thought it would be a really good uh, opportunity for me to show you some of the other things I've been working on. You know, when you're uh, when you're building a plane, there's actually more that happens um, besides just building. Um, there are other things that you have to think about, and one of those things I've been processing is uh, my power distribution. And so I've been work, kind of working that out. Um, I've made my kind of made my choices on uh, instruments and how I'm going to set the plane up. Um, I've made my engine choice, um, and so I kind of know everything that I've got to deal with. And so I've been working out kind of how that all works, and not only um, working out the actual. Uh, how the power distributes and, and how you, how much it's going to consume and all that. I've actually been working out uh, uh, kind of my wiring diagram. So I'm going to share that with you today so you can kind of see and follow along on some of the behind the scenes stuff that I'm, uh, I'm up to. So um, yeah, so uh, let's, uh, let's get to it here. So the best place to start is uh, just with a simple equipment list. And uh, let me get my phone over here because I'm going to need it as a calculator here in a minute. So I have, um, uh, first of all, I'll tell you my, uh, my engine choice. I've chosen the uh, Scott Kessler uh, Hummel 45 horsepower um, half VW with, uh, with dual ignition. And in order for me to um, carry the half VW on this particular airframe, I'm going to be using uh, Mori Hummel's design for modifying uh, uh, 1100R Mini Max in order to uh, bed mount the half VW, and the um, which is like really cool that those resources are available. You know, I was processing the engine. Uh, I didn't really know at first that I had a good option of a four cycle engine that somebody had already kind of worked out how to get it installed and everything for the 1100R, but after uh, doing a lot of research, um, I kind of came to the conclusion that this is exactly what I want to use, but um, it weighs 85 pounds, which is pretty close to the, kind of the, the, around the maximum limit you want to put on the front of 1100R. There's a little bit of uh, beefing up to do, but that's all in the plan here which I actually got off of team's website and um, team has uh, uh, it's I think it's down I can't remember exactly where it is it has to do with modifications or or uh, alterations I can't remember exactly but I'll uh, I'll find it and uh, share it with you so you can locate it and um, so I found that drawing then I talked with uh, Scott a little bit so I could kind of understand how the uh, how the whole system uh, works. So one thing about it is there is no electrical system, so I am going to be completely dependent on a lithium battery to run all of my components, and um, it's a battery that uh, I'll be able to easily remove from the airplane and take it with me and charge it and bring it back, and maybe I'll even purchase two so that I have. Um, two to rotate uh, But I'll figure that out when I get there um, But what I know is these are the items that I have in the plane um, It'll have a, an electronic ignition. That's uh, that'll come with the engine uh, from Scott Kassler And I'm actually getting uh, getting ready to send in my deposit so I can get in line and uh, I found out from talking to him a couple days ago that that's actually a um, an eight-month wait uh, so that I think that actually works out really well to the end of my project. I was hoping to finish a couple months earlier than that, but uh, eight months uh, actually will work pretty good with the uh, pretty good with the timeline because that's about when I was hoping to be you know mid late summer I wanted to be flying. Um, so it's not a terrible thing. Um, it just uh, takes a while, but what you get for your weight is a completely built in a uh, test run um, with uh, carb and all the ignition already installed and then all of that is packaged up and sent to you and so you can be assured that everything that you have uh, with the engine works and um, 
So, so that's really cool. But anyway, uh, so the electronic ignition, um, he said that it averages between, between 1 and 2 amps, so I'm averaging that at 1.5 amps. Probably could have just as easily just put it at the high end, um, but I'll leave it there at uh, 1.5. Um, my uh, Sporties uh, SP400 radio um, at idle, it's uh, 68 milliamps is what it's, what it's uh, using and the uh, uh, SP400 when you're transmitting is using 340 milliamps. Uh, I'm going to be using MGL instruments. Um, the uh, first one is the uh, MGL EMS2, that's the, uh, the uh, engine management system. So it, it covers, uh, yeah, I'm actually super impressed with these. So uh, Gyro Jeffro was the first person I saw use these instruments and um, I saw them in his plane and I'll, I'll actually link his channel here. He's got a really, really good channel where he's flying a HIMAX a lot, a lot of flying pictures. He goes through some of the things that he deals with and um, uh, it's, a, it's a, really good, uh, a really good channel. So, uh, and the uh, EMS2 um, actually, you know, CHT, EGT, uh, oil pressure, oil temp, the tachometers on there. Uh, I did a, a kind of an analysis. Well, first I'll tell you about the the second instrument is the MGL the MGL ASV2, which is actually the um, the airspeed, and it's uh, it's got you covered for uh, um, airspeed altimeter as well as VSI, and um, I believe this is the instrument that I saw um, in uh, in Gyro's uh, uh, airplane. So. Uh, so I've got those two, um, uh, it says in their literature that the EMS-2 uses 130 milliamps and, and the ASV-2 uses 125 milliamps. And, um, and then uh, because I have two wing tanks, I'm going to have a uh, uh, basically a backup fuel, uh, fuel pump system uh, just in the way of a facet pump. Uh, my plan is to, and this is the next thing I'm going to do, is sort of figure out the routing of my fuel system. But uh, my plan is to um, uh, have a uh, gas collator. Uh, the, the two wing tanks will, will um, tee together and go to a gas collator. And then in between the gas collator and the, the fuel filter and the engine will actually um, be, will be the, uh, the facet pump. And that pump uh, draws 1.5 amps. When, uh, when it's in operation. So what, what I'm using for a battery is going to be a, uh, uh, a 10 amp, um, a 10 amp life PO4 uh, battery. And it's not a, it's a, of course it's just, this is a 12 volt system obviously. And the interesting thing is this whole this thing weighs uh, 2.7 pounds, so it's extremely light, uh, not cheap. Um, it's like a hundred bucks uh, for uh, a particular brand. Uh, I believe it's called. Um, this is my book, by the way, where I, when I'm thinking about things, I just keep this book handy, and I'm sitting on my couch writing notes. Um, but the battery is actually from a company called. Uh, at least this particular one that I found, it's a Dakota. There are a number of different manufacturers of this battery, but, um, but I think this one uh, is the one that attracted me the most. So, uh, Yeah, so what we want to do now is, is the, the, the question here, the math is, um, when this stuff is in operation, how long does it take to drain this battery? so I can see uh, how much flight time I have um, based, on, uh, based on that usage. And they make a 12 amp battery as well, so um, it weighs about a pound more, and uh, that's a possibility. You know, if, you, if I need to gain a little more time, um, then I can do it that way. But I'm trying to make conservative, conservative estimates, so. Uh, so what happens is, uh, Basically, uh, amps are a thousand milliamps. So what you do is you just do the math here. 
get my calculator up. So first we want to find out what's the total usage. Uh, and when I get to, so the, so the total usage, so 1.5 amps is 1500 milliamps. So we'll put that one in first and then, uh, and then 68 and uh, 340 on that one, 130 plus 125 plus another 1500. So that gives me uh, 3,663 uh, milliamps. 3,663 milliamps. And you know, you might have noticed that I'm figuring the uh, transmit mode on the uh, radio as if it's just keyed the whole time at this point. So I just wanted to start there and see uh, where we end up. So uh, so we have 10 amps, which uh, 10 amps, uh, 10 amps equals 10,000 milliamps. So you can already kind of see the math here. We have uh, 10,000, uh, so we have 10,000 divided by uh, 3663. So that's 2.73 um, so we've got uh, 10 amps divided by 3663 milliamps equals 2.73 hours. So that means in this configuration, if that mic was keyed the whole time, um, we would be able to get about uh, 2.73 hours out of this battery, maybe a little bit less, maybe 2.5, 2.25, something like that. And I had figured all of this before I had learned, you know, what the electronic ignition was gonna, was gonna pull. And actually I wasn't quite sure. I, I knew the magneto was the primary ignition. I, I didn't know exactly what the, uh, what the secondary ignition was or or what it drew, what what its draw was but now that I've got that information I can do some pretty good figuring so let's let's say uh, let's just say we go up to the 12 amp uh, battery and I lose another pound off my body to, to carry the extra pounds um, <laughs> they say it's easier for the pilot to lose weight than to take weight out of the airplane um, so that's 12,000 milliamps divided by the 3663. That gives me 3.27 hours. Uh, so that uh, that's a little, quite a bit more time. You know, three hours, three hours of flight time in a Minimax is probably more than you want to be in it. So, um, and maybe even two and a half hours might be uh, more than you want to be in it, but you never know how far you might want to go with this one with a with a four-stroke engine um, burning two gallons an hour um, with two wing tanks. I can stretch out pretty far. So, uh, but anyway, let's do uh, let's do one more calculation. And at this this time, let's take the 340. We're gonna just do something a little more realistic. We're gonna. Um, we're going to do that at uh, 25%. Instead of assuming that we're going to key this mic full time, let's just say 340 uh, times 0.25. So really, that's 85. Um, that's 85. Eighty-five milliamps. So we'll do the. We'll do the math one more time, and this time we'll insert uh, 85. Instead of the other, so we got 1.5, 1500, plus uh, 68, plus 85, plus 130, plus 125, plus 1500, so that's 3408. So 
So now we'll take our 3408 uh, back to our 10 amp. And we'll figure that. 10,000 divided by 3408 gives us uh, 2.93 hours. So my, my conclusion is, I think, uh, I, b I believe at this point is that I'm going to, um, I'm going to start with the 10 amp battery um, at 2.7 pounds. And I, uh, since, you know, since I'm building an experimental, um, I have a lot of time to fly off close to the airport anyway. So I'm going to actually get a really good opportunity to see, um, to see what this, uh, what this system will actually be doing after a certain period of time because it'll be easy. The cool thing is, is you know, with a, I have a really good RC uh, life battery charger and I'll actually be able to see after a certain amount of time I can bring the battery home and I can charge it and actually see uh, how much juice I took out of it and so I can really figure out exactly what I am using. But I will be careful not to box myself into the size of this 10 amp. I'll leave myself some margin maybe to go up to the 12 if I want to. Um, and uh, anyway, I, I just wanted to show you this. If When you're sort of figuring out what you want to use and then you uh, are going from there to uh, want to know how much juice you're going to use over time, um, this is how you do it. So, all right. So um, now that you've seen uh, now that you've seen that, I will. Um, uh, I want to show you my wiring diagram now. Basically, I bought uh, I bought this uh, book, and I'll I'll show it to you here. And uh, to, to just learn kind of uh, what I can. Now this, this particular book um, is a little more advanced than, uh, than my airplane. So um, I had to sort of figure things out, but learn the basics. But it's really good to have because uh, I have no idea what my next airplane will be, but uh, some two-seater in my future somewhere. And I, uh, so it's really good to kind of learn that and know exactly what to do so um, so it was okay to be able to take that information from the book even though it might be for like an RV or something more advanced like that and kind of pull it down to what my needs are and so um, I'm new to uh, to this uh, figuring out uh, um, breakers and uh, switches and um, all these different components so um, if you're a lot smarter than I am, and I'm pretty certain that some of you are when it comes to this because you've, you've probably wired something recently, uh, at least a lot more recently than I did, and my 277-103 uh, that I built 15 years ago was very simple uh, wiring situation, so I didn't have to deal with anything, um, anything like this. but. Uh, if you see something um, that doesn't look right to you uh, or you know a uh, better route, um, feel free to comment. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not the type of person who, um, who believes in uh, the fact that I have it nailed down at all or that I know all the right ways or you know, whatever. It, 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 one thing I've learned, um, uh, I, I've learned more from being a technical counselor with EAA um, then just by hearing other people talk about their airplanes and how they did things and uh, all that kind of stuff, uh, then I have kind of doing my own study. And so I know um, in our community there are some really smart people. So, uh, so I'm going to show you the uh, diagram here. And it's... Uh, All right, so I've got it on my table here, but I'm not going to show it to you like this. I'm going to actually put it on the screen, so you can uh, so you can see it. But uh, this is uh, at the bottom. Uh, you can see my instrument panel as I have it planned out. The uh, ASV2 is on the left. The uh, EMS2 is on the right, and then on the far right is uh, just a compass, a panel mount compass. Then I have a USB port. 
um, on the bottom right hand side that fits into the panel and then uh, I have a uh, uh, yeah that particular USB port uh, comes from uh, I think it's called crazed pilot uh, they actually sell some uh, LED lights and stuff like that but uh, uh, anyway um, it looked like a really cool uh, a really cool panel mount um, USB so I'm going to put that there you just never know what I might want to use uh, in the plane with my limited power probably not a lot but uh, if for some reason I need to, to put flight aware on my on my iPhone and I need to plug in my iPhone um, I have some place to uh, some place to do that um, so starting in the bottom left corner you can see that's where my master switch is and the one thing that I you won't see in my system because I I don't I don't know yet um, if it's if I'm gonna need it uh, is that I notice in a lot of systems that have starters and stuff they actually have a relay on their master and I do I don't have a relay planned in here and I'm still trying to discover whether or not that's really necessary for me so um, if you know the answer to that that would be awesome um, and so on the master basically I have uh, 20 amps on that uh, system even though I'm, I'm, I'm using a 10 amp uh, battery I'm basing the uh, I'm basing the 20 amps on the wire size and that's one of the things that I learned a lot is that how many how many amps the device that you're drawing um, the breaker is there to protect the wire not the device and so if uh, if the wire gets to uh, it's basically to keep it from burning and so when it gets to a, a certain amperage uh, that's what the breaker's for and um, that was uh, something new to me I always thought it was there to protect the device but it's not and so what I've got is uh, master switches on the left um, primary ignition um, is next uh, to the right and then the uh, secondary ignition is to the right and then my avionics uh, switch is um, right by that. Uh, the ASV2 and the EMS2 um, both use a one amp uh, breaker so you can see I put the breakers right below them as well as the five amp uh, breaker for the USB port is uh, right next to that. And then uh, the breakers for the uh, other devices um, obviously the magneto ignition doesn't have a breaker so 20 amps on the master, 3 amps on the uh, secondary ignition and uh, 10 amps on the, on the radio and that may be a little uh, maybe a little strong on the radio but uh, 10 amps um, covers the uh, uh, 14 gauge wire um, that I've used you can see on the diagram up above I've actually uh, uh, determined the wire size and uh, that's another thing that that um, is important to pay attention to when you're setting up your wiring for your airplane is that you know the wires need to also coordinate with the amperage um, so that uh, you, you keep everything everything sort of synced like a 3 amp device with a, a particular wire like 20 gauge and a 3 amp uh, 3 amp breaker so if we start at the very top um, we start at the top you'll see the engine block and on the back of that is a magneto and off to the right is the uh, ignition my secondary ignition and uh, over to the left is the uh, 12 volt uh, 10 amp lithium battery and right in the middle are the uh, are the buses I have one for positive one for negative and uh, the negative grounds to the engine block the battery also uh, grounds to the engine block. I didn't want the uh, facet pump to be in the uh, same ground system as as everything else in case something went wrong with that. I still want to have that pump available. So I actually have taken the, uh, uh, if something goes wrong with that, that particular ground, um, I've actually taken the uh, uh, negative of the uh, of the pump and I've uh, given it its own independent ground <clears throat> back to the engine so uh, the the flow so to speak is uh, the uh, 
the positive wires. Um, and this is what took me a while to really think through. Uh, they come out of the uh, positive side of the bus here. So it must, we'll, we'll just use as an example and trace the, uh, if you go to the top left, the positive side of the battery, and you come over to the left, and that 12 gauge wire goes down and over into the 20 amp breaker, and then it goes through the breaker into the master switch, and then from the master switch, it goes uh, kind of up the middle and to one of the, uh, one of the main posts on that uh, positive terminal block. And so everything sort of flows that way. Uh, the uh, um, uh, facet pump, as an example, it comes the left. What I did is I kept positive to the left on everything. So the uh, positive comes out of the facet pump and it comes over to the left, down through the breaker, um, back up through the switch, and then up and over to the, uh, to the terminal block. And I've traced these a number of times. I, I still think I've, there's, you know, I'm going to keep doing it because I may have made a mistake somewhere. I actually did in the beginning and had to reverse something because I had it going to the switch before it went to the breaker. And then uh, my radio, actually, this particular radio, it actually runs off of 12 volts. Um, so I don't have to really do anything to um, wire that down. Uh, they make... Uh, they make a transformer that converts the power from uh, from 24 volts or whatever, steps it down, then it plugs into the radio. Um, but it uh, uses eight AA batteries, so it's basically running off of those uh, uh, 12 volts anyway. So I'm actually going to be able to um, wire through the standout breaker and uh, directly to the uh, transceiver. So and I'll make up a special uh, special plug so that when I put it in its mount, I'll be able to connect for my headset and connect a, uh, a BNC connector for the, uh, for the antenna because I'll have a remote antenna on the airplane. And I'll be able to, f I'm going to figure out what that looks like, but it'll be mounted off to the left somewhere uh, of the instrument panel. So, uh, yeah. All right, so if you... Uh... If you hung in with me that long, um, uh, thank you for that. I know it's, uh, it's a, it was probably a bit of a long explanation and I'm sure I could have just uh, shown you the picture and you can follow along and figure it out on your own. But I really wanted to share this. Number one, if you've never done this before, um, I can share with you what I've learned. Um, again, you know, I think right way, wrong way opinions tend to go a little bit out of the way when it comes to electricity because things are only they only work one way or another there's not a lot of different ways to do this it's just a matter of getting it right or wrong um, and I prefer to just make sure that I've got it right so showing it to you uh, my YouTube audience um, gives you an opportunity to uh, see it and check it as well and uh, you may have some uh, some good ideas so, um, thinking about a lot of things with the airplane, I'm actually working on the design of how I'm going to finish it, um, and I'll share that with you pretty soon. Um, my all-time favorite airplane is the Hawker Hurricane. Um, uh, the uh, Hurricane did all the work, the Spitfire got the glory, and <laughs> I stick to that. Um, my uh, favorite stories around the uh, Hurricane are the number 71 squadron were actually American pilots who were flying uh, hurricanes with the British. And uh, I just think that their whole uh, story is just really super cool. And, and when I started to learn about that, um, I became even more excited um, about, the, uh, about the hurricane. And so it's always been for a really, really long time, uh, my favorite airplane. And so I'm going to paint my Minimax um, like a Hawker Hurricane. So uh, it's going to be uh, camo with the, with the kind of, uh, I don't know if it's like a duck egg blue on the bottom um, and a, a camo scheme on the, on the top. And so I'm just in the process of kind of uh, using a program to kind of 
paint on the Minimax drawing to see how I want to do it. But uh, I just think it's going to look really cool, and so I'm in the process of uh, putting that together. And uh, I hope this was informative for you. Um, and uh, thank you so much for uh, following along with my channel and watching my progress. And uh, I just wanted an opportunity to show you kind of what happens behind the scenes. And uh, so, yeah, a uh, little shout out to um, EAA before I go here. Um, if you're a EAA, EAA member and I know from looking at my uh, analytics that only 50% of you are from the United States and are viewing from the United States. So for half of you who are from the U.S., if you're an EAA member, the, um, uh, the builder's log um, is free and available to um, EAA members. It's really a super way to uh, uh, document uh, the time that you've spent building your plane and uh, uh, keeping photographs, uh, all of the things that are required of us when we're building. Um, it's a great place to house that. So um, I will have a link to that in the description um, so you can find it easily if you're interested. And uh, yeah, so thanks so much for hanging out with me and uh, I'll catch you later.